going to flow miraculous things in our life this morning in Jesus' name.
To him, just begin to bless the name of the Lord, the one that brought you into his presence today. Lord, we worship your name. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we lift your eyes. Magnify the name of the Lord. Exalt his holy name. Worship him. The I am that I am. The all sufficient God, the all mighty God. The one that gave you the opportunity to be in his presence today. Lord, your name is exalted. Lord, your name is praised. Lord, your name is glorified. Daddy, we thank you. We magnify you. We adore you, God. We worship you. We magnify you. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your kindness. Great is your love. Great is your mercy. Great is your mercy. Concerning our lives, Lord, we magnify your name. Father, we are not taking for granted anything that you have done. Lord, we are not taking for granted all that you have done. We just want to say thank you, Jesus. Lord, we have come to say mighty father we adore you lord we worship your name thank you ancient of this in jesus mighty name we are prayed in jesus mighty name we are prayed 
You know, many times we don't know how to thank God. Maybe sometimes because of what we are asking for, maybe it has not come. This last week, I think on Thursday or Tuesday, I can't remember the exact date, I checked my Facebook and I saw that there is somebody's birthday on that day. So, and I sent happy birthday to him. He's, a, he's somebody that we worked together sometimes ago. And I sent happy birthday, many happy returns to him. Now, I got another message from a lady that works with him. He said, sir, pastor, have you not heard? I said, heard what? He said, this man is late. I said, what happened? He said, he died last week. That is a week to his birthday. And I was not aware. You know, many times we, we look at things and we don't know that you are alive today. That means you have a better tomorrow. Can you just lift up your voice and your hands to the Lord and say, Father, I want to thank you. That you are counting me among the living. That you are not counting me among the dead. Ah, that you are not counting my children among the dead. That you are not making me to be numbered among the gone. The ones that are gone. Lord, I want to appreciate you. Despite all I am passing through. Despite what is happening. You travel. You travel. Your children travel. Your, your husband travel. They are on the air. They are on the water. They are on the sea. And here you are today. In the presence of the Lord. Can you give God all the glory? Can you give God all the honor? Can you give God all adoration? Say, Father, I just want to thank you. Lord, I want to appreciate you. I want to honor your name. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my wife. Lord, I thank you for every member of my family. Lord, I appreciate you, Father, for bringing me, for making me to be part of this family. I bless your name, Lord. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want you to say better amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Yeah. Matthew, that was read to us. I believe that the, the technical will give it to us so that we can read together. Matthew chapter 17. Let's read from verse 24. Matthew 17. We are still standing up praying. Matthew 17, verse 24. Are we there? If you are there, pick your phone, pick your Bible, and let's read it. Matthew chapter 17. We are reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 17. We are waiting for the technical. Matthew 17 verse 24. If you are there on your phone, can we read together? One to go. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tributes money came to Peter and said, Doth your master pay tributes? He said, yes. And when he had come unto the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the king of this earth take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, Of strangers, Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free. I am praying for somebody here today. Because you are a child of God, God will see to it that you are free in the mighty name of Jesus. That is the title of my message today. He said, then are the children free. Then are the children free. Now, if you go to verse 27, he said, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go down to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take it and give it for me and for thee. And we are going to pray prayer. Say, Father, any man, any woman, any situation that want to bring embarrassment to my life, ah, anyone that is threatening, that want to bring, they wanted to embarrass him. They said, do you pay tribute? Do you have, have money? That Father, any situation I want to bring embarrassment. Father, I need your divine intervention. Father, please intervene. Ah, Father, please intervene. I need Lord, please intervene. Lord, in the mighty name of Lord, anyone, any woman, that Lord, I want to bring embarrassment to my life. I want to bring embarrassment to my life. I want to bring embarrassment to my life. I say, Father, please Lord, please Lord, please Lord, please Lord, 
Baba Lord, intervene. I need your divine intervention. I need your divine intervention. Lord, I need your divine intervention in my life today. Lord, intervene. Lord, intervene. Lord, intervene. Lord, intervene. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Ah, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I am praying for you that no situation will bring embarrassment to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Any man, any woman that is looking for your downfall, they want to embarrass you, they want to laugh at you, they want to mock you. I say, Father, God will intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, your life will not become a mockery to the society in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone that is waiting, they are asking, does he even have the money? Ah, a, a, a friend of mine, before he got married, it was, it was late. And somebody came one day and asked him, how, how is your wife? He wanted to embarrass him. How is your wife? How is your children? He said they are fine. And he, and he laughed at him. He, he knew that he was not married. He just wanted to mock him. And he made a statement in Yoruba language. <laughs> he said, Okobo, Okobo, Kibimositosi. I don't know. <laughs> That is the person that I am praying for you. Any man, any woman that want to ridicule God in your life. Ah, God will surprise them in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I said God will surprise them in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I said God will surprise them in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that want to laugh at your situation, they want to laugh at you. They want to mock you. They want to say yes, yeah, let's see. I say, anyone that said, let us see. They will see God in action, in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, Peter, go to the sea. Take the first fish that come out and pray for me and for you. I am praying for you again. We have prayed that prayer before, but I want to pray for you again. Everything that is not enough before, very soon there will be surplus for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I say anything that is not adequate, they are not available for you before. I say very soon, there will be surplus in the mighty name of Jesus. God will take care of you. He will take care of your children. He will take care of your family. He will take care of your business in the mighty name of Jesus. He shall be well with you. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now, can you greet your neighbor? Say, neighbor, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Ask him, how was your day? How was your week? Hallelujah. Shake hands with at least five persons. Shake hands with at least five persons. Greet them. And have the fun. Amen. I want to appreciate God for what the Lord has started to do in our lives. And I know that the next person to share a testimony will be you in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, as a pastor, I'm excited. There are some testimony that you are excited about. I know it has been announced to us, but I will announce it again because it's giving me joy. Amen. There will be announced again. The details will be announced to us. I am happy to announce to us that in this parish, in the month of October, 2023, we are going to be having two weddings. Yeah, I want it to be more exacted. Scream if you want to scream it. Amen. It's my joy that my daughters are getting married. That my sons are getting married. And the two weddings are falling on the same day. Amen. And so if we are 200, 100 we go for one. 100 we go for the other one. Praise the Lord. And if I will announce in advance that in the month of December, we are going to have two weddings again. And those two weddings are on the same day. <laughs> Amen. Dude, let me tell you something. God will take care of you in this parish. On this mountain, God will answer your prayers. Two weddings, two weddings. Maybe in, the, in January, I will announce another wedding. Maybe in February, I will announce another wedding. <laughs> Amen. 2024, let me begin to tell you, 2024 is going to be a wonderful year for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
And that, the other one in December is taking place in the same day in this parish. So as we are finishing one, we are going to enter another one. God will take your view in the mighty name of Jesus. I have a very brief time. They told me that I must not exceed. <laughs> My guys told me I must not exceed some time. Now we have read it. Jesus asked Peter a question in verse 25 of the place that we read. He said, what do you think, Peter? Who should pay tributes? Who should pay custom? He said, of whom do the king of this earth take custom? Of whom do they exact custom? Of whom do they force to pay tributes? Do you know that many families are paying tribute spiritually? Tributes. Their life is under bondage. They are working for others. They are laboring and laboring and laboring and nothing to show for it. That is the life that is paying tribute. And Jesus now asks, tributes are not to be paid by the children. That will be paid by the strangers. Jesus answered him in verse 26. He said, Then are the children free. Then the children are exempted from paying tributes. I am praying for somebody here today. God will make sure that your freedom is perfected today in the mighty name of Jesus. Many families are under terrible tributes. I've said it before many times. There was a brother that came to us one time like that. And if you see him, you will think he's older than his age. He's so old and he just finished school. He finished school. I think he did um, business at me. And he was riding keke. That's not the problem. Because anything, anybody can write keke. Amen. And as much as he's bringing money. And I asked him, what happened? He said there are five boys in his family. All of them are graduates. But none of them, none of them is working. Nobody in the family. So they live from hands to mouth. And he said, Pastor, I want my case to be different. I want to have my own job. I want to have my own family. We pray with him. He's married now. He has children and he has a good job. I am praying for you today that God will exempt you from every family causes and every ancestral covenant in the mighty name of Jesus. Say then, the children are free. Then, the children are free. The children are free from every form of poverty. They are free from every form of disappointment. They are free from every form of untimely death or hard luck. A man came to us some years and said, Sir, I am about to be 40 years old. Then I was just a parish pastor. I was about to be, I'm about to be 40 years old. But sir, do you know one thing in my family? That nobody that is working, nobody that makes it, nobody that has a, a, a good job, nobody that is doing well, crosses the 40 year. Every one of them before 39. They die. Say, sir, I am by next year I will be 40. And I want to, I don't want to die. We pray with him. He's still alive today. He's over 60 now. Amen. God exempted him. Amen. God freed him. Amen. God, God delivered him from the bondage of untimely death. I also have a friend, very brilliant boy. Brilliant. My wife knows him. Very brilliant. He, he, made, he made first class at OAU. Made first class. Did well. Got a good job at 23. He was already... He, he built his house at 23, 24. Good job. And when he was about to clock 30... I think 34. Amen. He 
he had a sickness. They flew him to US, where they gave him the best of the medicals, the best ants. I don't know really. He died. And I ask, in his family, there is one of these, you know, the way they, is it appetite or whatever, this kind of, when they will be saying, this is something that happened in Yoruba language. I don't know, the, you know, it's Oriki. The way they, the way they, the way they, in their family, one of the things they say concerning them that they, they said, the person that is small and saying, I am ready to die. And their death is, is a terrible death. It roams in the family. But he was not aware. Amen. Then are the children free. Then are the children free. If you see a man that is under tribute, if you see a man that is under, under custom, paying tribute to the devil, you will see him that he does not have a life of his own. He will be, he will be, he will be living for somebody else. You'll be working for another person. You'll be laboring and nothing to show for it. A man will be asking, yes, you are making effort. A brother came to us one time. He said, I want to change my name. I said, what happened? He said, what's your name? He said, my name is Effort. He said, that is his name, Effort. And every time, doing well, you will be making effort. And before you know it, you will be at the verge of making it. You'll be at the verge of breakthrough. Something will happen. Because they say, your name is Effort. I am praying for somebody here today. Every negative impact of your name, God will remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every negative impact of your family name, I said God will remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He said then, then the children are free. Then the children are free. They are free from working for somebody and and, 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 and not having anything to show for it. Romans chapter 9, verse 7. Now, when we talk about children of God, it's not everybody that comes to church that is a child of God. Amen. The people that will be free from paying tributes, the people that will be free from the bondage of the enemy, are the true children of God. Romans chapter 9, verse 7. He said that, he said, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac thy seed shall be called. Not everybody that comes to church is a child of God. Not everybody that bear a Christian name is a child of God. Not everybody that is born in a Christian family is a child of God. Amen. A child of God is somebody that has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. I was reflecting this week. I was just reflecting about the church. I was just reflecting about Christianity. And I, you know, before, the, the way you will know that somebody had really given his life to Christ is that there is going to be a change. There will be a change of character. There will be a change of behavior. There will be a change in the, in the life of that person. And it will be so glaring. Everybody will know it. Everybody will see it. But you know there are some of us that have been coming to church. Day in, day out. There is no change. You cannot say, you come. God bless you. You do a lot. God bless you. You walk in the church. Yes, you can be a pastor. God bless you. But there is no glaring. There is no glaring change. The way you get angry. Before you say you gave your life to Christ. You still get angry. The way you keep malice. Before you say you give your life to Christ, you, keep, you still keep malice. The way you behave, the way you act, before you say you give your life to Christ, it's the same way. You, 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 in fact, it's like wickedness has now even aggravated. Some people can, in the name of being a Christian, being strict and being wicked. Nothing changes in your life. But as children of God, there must be a change. When you say, I have given my life to Christ, something must change. Something must change. Your attitude must change. Your character must change. Your behavior must change. People must see it. That truly, this person is a changed person. 
A child of God is a changed man. We used to have a, 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 a vendor in the place that I work. Very terrible man. He is so terrible. He has a son that is more terrible than him. And he, he, said, he said, one day I called him. I said, boy. He himself is a very terrible man. He said, boy, from now, the two of us will be going to church. The two of us will go to church. And we will sit together. We will sit together. Where we, so that... When we get home, you will tell me what you learn in the church. And I will tell you what I learned in the church. So that after, he said, I'm giving you three months. After three months, if I cannot see a change in your life, then I will tell you to go. And he told me, <laughs> he said, after three months, the boy did not change. He told him, yes, I have done my part. I pray that may God not give up on us in the mighty name of Jesus. Can people see Christ in you? Can people see a change? Do you still scheme yourself? Do you still plan evil? Do you still in, in, the, in, in, your, in your shop? In your shop? Can you then say, ah, no, 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 don't touch his thing so? And every... <laughs> you know, I know a lady that every morning, she will go for money cry. Give your life to Christ. Give your whatever. Oh, God is good. And the way he behaves... To the, to, to the husband, the way he behaves in the, in the compound is so terrible. That is not a child of God. John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. What did he say? He said, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them, that believe on his name. As many as received him. The people that received him are the people that will not pay tributes. These people that receive him are the ones that will not be any under bondage. The people that receive him, the people that accepted him as their Lord and Savior, they are the ones that will become true children of God and they will be free from paying tributes. As many as believe him. They are the one that he has given the power to become the sons of God. John chapter 3, verse 18. John chapter 3, verse 18. He said, He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Not he that is coming to church, not he that is preaching. Not he that is walking in the hands of God. Not everyone that believed in him. Everyone that believed in his name. Everyone that accepted him as, in, as their Lord and Savior. And have, have changed their lives. They are the one they are called children. And as children, when you give your life to Christ, there will be a radical difference. People we know. People we testify. You remember that song? He said, things are different right now. Something happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus. You remember? You know, that is, is, is a song that every child of God, you know, he said, things are different right now. Something happened to me. Can you know, do you know what happened to you from that time that you say, I give my life to Christ? Or maybe some of us have not even had that experience. Can people say yes of a truth? This person had really, really given his life. There will be a radical change. There will be a radical difference from the, from the life you used to live before. If that has not happened, then it must happen today. And I know it will happen today in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're truly a child of God, your desire, your life, will be to please God. Will be to glorify His name. Everything you do, you will glorify Him. You will just live for your life. You will live your life for Him. That's one that says, I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let come what may, the Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. That is the song of a child of God. That look, God, 
I live for you day after day. There will be a radical change. People will see it and you will be willing and be ready to please God and to glorify your heavenly father. His life will be a life characterized with love. Love for God. He just want to be. That's why David said, anytime they ask me, let us go to the hands of the Lord. I'm so happy. I am glad when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. You know, anytime they say, let's go to the house of God. You want to be there. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from my father. Coming into where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory, your glory in your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. Amen. You know, you just want to be in his presence, you just want to please him. That's a child of God. You are forsaking the world. You are forsaking sin. You are forsaking Satan. And the fruits, the Bible said, by their fruits, you will do what? You will know them. By their fruits, you will know them. And I'm praying today that as many of us that have not given our life to Christ, or maybe we have given, but there is nothing to show for it, God will manifest himself in your life today in the mighty name of Jesus. And where I am really going, the Bible said, then the children are free. The children are free from paying tributes. The children are free from being under bondage. If you are a child of God here, I am the good news for you. That God is going to make sure that your freedom is exerted today in the mighty name of Jesus. What are we free from? What are we free from as a child of God? We are going to be free from the bondage of sin. We are going to be free from the bondage of sin. Sometimes many of us, you, you know, some things you don't want to do. You find out that, that you are doing them. Some of us, we have some habits. Some of us, it has become, it has become, it has become an addiction. It has become an addiction. When you, uh, when you, <laughs> when you say, I'm not going to do it. But before you know it, before the day runs out, you, will, you, you fall to temptation so easily. The Bible talks about some sins that easily beset us. You don't want to do it. You are praying, God, at the beginning of the year, you are telling God, God, please, nothing now. I will not do it again. January, and before the end of January, you still fall into it again. God, Jesus Christ had come to free us, to deliver us. It's a bondage. Sin is a bondage. Some people cannot do without smoking. Some people cannot do without taking beer. I, I have a friend that he, do, he, do, he was even a pastor. He does not like drinking. He does not, his system does not like drinking. But any day, any time he goes out and he saw his, his friend drinking, he cannot remove his face. He cannot remove his eyes. And just a little, just a little cup we begin to be tipsy. And it has become an addiction. Some of us, we are addicted to sex. We are addicted to terrible things. And you are praying, God, please deliver me. Your deliverance will come today in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I say your deliverance will come today in the mighty name of Jesus. Those are the things. That is what God has come. You are paying tribute to the devil. He may ask you, do it. The Bible says that whoever you obey, you are the servant of that person. If you obey the devil, that means you are the servant of the devil. If you obey God, that means you are the servant of God. Today, God will give you the strength. He will give you the courage to obey him totally in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew 1 21. He said, and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. 
for he shall save his people from their sin. He has delivered us from sin and from every additions. First John chapter 3, verse 8 to 9, 8 to 10. First John chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. He said, And he, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Another thing that he delivered us from is that he delivered us from sickness. He delivered us from sickness. That's why sometimes I, I, I have a friend that as he collects his salary like this, as he collects his salary, something will happen. A family member will just fall sick. They will call him from, the, from home and say, ah, somebody is sick, you need to send money. I am praying for somebody here today that anything that is wasting the resources that God is giving unto you, and we come to it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that is siphony, that is siphony, where you spend your money unnecessarily, and come to it today in the mighty name of Jesus. You will no longer pay tribute to sickness again in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of us, every month, one sickness or the other, one sickness or the other, buying drugs. You buy drugs, eh, dr and when you sum up, you see that you have spent 20,000 naira, 40,000 naira on drugs, and come to it today in the mighty name of Jesus. He delivered us. In, 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 in Isaiah chapter 54, Isaiah chapter 54, if you read from verse 4, it says, Surely he had borne our griefs. Surely he has carried our sorrow. He said, We yet, we have seen him striking, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. With the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. So you are delivered. No longer will sickness have a place in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. He delivers us from every form of afflictions, every form of oppression, every form of physical, spiritual, or emotional torments. Each other are not supposed to be paying tributes. That's why sometimes, I'm sorry, but that is what happens. When I, when I hear Christians, Say yes, eh, eh, they are tormenting me in dreams. Eh, they are molesting me in dreams. I said, God, you need to exert. Sometimes some of us cannot sleep well. From one nightmare to another, somebody coming to oppress you. Ha! It's a shame. Somebody coming to oppress you. You will, as you stand up, you will break the wing of that witch. You will tell him as you are flying, you will not, you will, ah. Amen. Sometimes some of us, we are, yes, I eat in the dream. And anytime you eat in the dream, you see somebody, you see something terrible happening to you. The woman said that she, anytime she's pregnant, anytime she's pregnant, when he's getting to six months, seven months, somebody will just bring, a woman will just bring uh, red oil, red oil into him and say, take. And as he takes that red oil, from the woman, the pregnancy will just go down. I am praying for you today. Anyone that torments you spiritually, the, the fire of heaven, we burn them in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that is not allowing your sleep to be sweet, you say, God give his beloved sweet sleep. Your sleep, whenever you want to sleep, you should sleep well. You should sleep soundly. Anytime you want to sleep, can you pray? Let's pray. Say, Father. Father. I want to pray prayer. Say, Father. Father. Anyone that come to disturb me in my sleep, whoever they may be, anyone that harasses me, anyone that torments me, anyone that is bringing food for me, today, I command the fire of the Holy Spirit to begin to burn them now. I am free myself. Lord, I free myself. I free myself. Lord, I free myself. No longer will I pay tribute. No longer will I be molested in the dream again. No longer be, will I be harassed in the dream again. Every form of torment in my dream, I command a stop and I destroy every coven in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. No longer. I am praying for somebody here today. As you sleep today, your sleep will be sweet in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Ah, I said your, sweet, your sleep will be sweet in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. That spiritual ketra, that spiritual ketra that brings food for you. Anytime you eat it, you, 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 you find something terrible happening to you. Today, hand come to the operation in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. As a child of God, you are delivered from the kingdom of darkness. You are delivered, you are free from, from every form of poverty. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, if you read from verse 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, from verse 9, he said, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was, he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Amen. That's why I pray for somebody here today. If you are looking for a job, God will provide for you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are looking for business, God will provide for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I am praying for somebody here. Your, that business will not collapse in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I said that business will not collapse in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I said that business will not collapse in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ had delivered us from poverty. He had delivered us from the, the kingdom of darkness. In, 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 in Colossians chapter 1, if you read from verse 12. Colossians chapter 1, if you read from verse 12. He said, give me thanks unto the Father. He said, which have made us me to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He said, who are delivered from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness. He has translated us from the kingdom of his, to the kingdom of his dear son. He has delivered us from every form of causes. We are supposed to be free from every form of covenants. Every form of causes, every cause roaming in your family, you will be free from them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every covenant roaming in your community, you are going to be free from them today in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be exempted from them. You will be delivered from them. You are not supposed to suffer. I am praying for you. You will not suffer what your parents suffered in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I say you will not suffer what your parents suffered in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Your portion is with the saints. Your portion is with the children of God. You don't have a portion with the unbelievers. Every form of, of causes in your family, they will not have a place in your body, in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. He said, Christ had redeemed us from the cause of the Lord. Be made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangs on the tree. And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. He said, blotting out all and writing of ordinances that were written against us, that are contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. You are going to be free today in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I say you are going to be free today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy One that can be free is a child of God. He said, now, then are the children free. Free from every harassment. Free from every form of oppression. Free from every power that wants to molest and harass you. Free from everyone that want to, that want to, that want to make your life miserable. There are some people that want to make the life of the children of God miserable. And sometimes some of us, we, the, our testimony is that today, praise God, I came and somebody, I mean, no longer will you, I don't like sharing bad testimonies. I like sharing good testimony. Testimony of marriage. Testimony of childbirth. Testimony of healing. That's going to be your testimony from today in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord has said, the children are free. You will be free from today in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we be on our feet and say, Father, Pray very well. Say, Father. Ah, say, Father. Today, I am free. I am your child. I am free. Begin to pray. Begin to pray that prayer. Father, I am free. I am free. I am free. I want to free yourself. Say, Father, I free myself. Lord, no longer. I no longer pay tribute to the enemy. I no longer pay tribute to the devil. I no longer pay tribute. Say, now. Then the children are free. I am free from every oppression, from every harassment of the devil. I am free from today in the mighty name of Jesus. I am free in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Pray very well. Say, Father. Father. Ah, say, Father. Father. 
because I am free from poverty, whatever I lay my hand upon to do from today, they will prosper in the mighty name of God. Pray that prayer that Father, I know I am free. I am free. I am free from every form of poverty. I am free from every form of hardship. Lord, whatever I lay my hand upon to do, Father, from today they prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, I want to adore you. I worship you. I thank you, Father, for today. You have told us the truth of being a child of God. You are no longer under any tributes. No longer any, under any bondage. I am praying for every one of us here. Anyone that is en under any bondage. One form of bondage or the other. Today your freedom has come in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, I say today your freedom has come in the mighty name of Jesus. Their word, then the children are free. We be your sentence from today in the mighty name of Jesus. Anytime the devil come to harass you, to molest you, you will tell him, I am free from your harassment. I am free from your molestation. That will be your portion from today in the mighty name of Jesus. No cause of the enemy. We have a place in your life. Henceforth, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every generational covenant that is roaming your family, hand come to them in your life today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. We adore you, we honor you. As many as today, I want every eyes to be bowed. Today you want to give your life to Christ. You don't want to be under any bondage again. I want to pray with you, especially. Today you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Can I see you raising up your hand? You don't want to be under any bondage. Please come, come forward, my sister. You want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ? Just come forward. Do you want to be under any bondage? Just come forward. I want to pray with you. I want to lay my hand upon, to, upon you specially. You want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are there, can I see you? Hand you don't, don't look at your friends. Don't look at anybody. You do your own and your freedom. We come today. Father, I thank you, Father, for that, your daughter, and for everyone that raised up their hands. I pray that, Father, you go to accept them into the family of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Let's be